Broadway's My Beat, from Times Square to Columbus Circle, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway's My Beat, with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. The mists rise from where September is dead. Drift from the mound of fallen leaves, swirl, cling to yellow of street lamp. And Broadway is October, and stillness, and stone. And on ebb of nighttime, the dream walkers, and tugging at their sleeves, solitude. Run from it, beat on a door, and behind it the muted laughter, and no one to hear what's outside. Run again, and suddenly far down the street, sudden shaft of yellow light, a trumpet's autumn song spilling into the gutter. And a man appears, reels away. Run, take his place. A door is open. And another place of October where I was in Detective Muggerton. Segment of city reserved for night children, for strollers, for lovers. Place where changes of season may be observed in planned gardens and on planned lakes. And this, a man lying dead in the autumn park. Danny? Huh? Come here a minute. Well? I guess you can't see it the way I'm holding the flash. Yeah, that better? Uh-huh. Rock, blood stains on it. What beat him to death, huh, Danny? Maybe you... What beat him to death? Take a tired man's word Mugger for it. Than... Yeah, yeah. I'll go through his pockets. You won't mind holding the flash for me. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Uh, not a thing on him, Danny. No wallet, no identity, no papers. Nothing. He's real clean. Yeah, thanks. Ask me, that's the size of it. Beaten, killed, robbed. That... Hey, shine the flash here a minute, Danny. Yeah, yeah, here on his face. A nice face, young. 22, 23 at the most. A nice face, young. Intrusion on an October night. A riding red moon, leaf shadows and tree shadows. And the far sounds, and closer, immediate... Granite rock in moist earth, and a crushed man, dead man. And now the far sound is the siren, the scream, the alarm, notice of death. There are men coming along officially designated to look at it. Doctor, driver, picture taker, measurer with the tape. Assign them this part of the night. Leave. Next morning, morgue. And flip aside the sheet so that people can lean close and look and shake their heads. No, sir, he's not the one. Not my son. Not my husband. Not the man who made me all those promises. Flip back the sheet. Body found in Central Park, unidentified. Until just before noon. Frankie. Frankie Spain. Friend of yours? Do the thing with the sheet, huh? Amigo, amigo. Friend of yours? Sure was. We can get out of here now, huh? Sure. Let's see, I've uh, got your name down here as Paul... Paul Gray. Put on Frankie Spain, that's who you got in there. Erase what's on his tag and put on Frankie. What made you come down here looking for him? He had to be here, sooner or later. Oh? You were never here before. I've been down here three times, four, five. Frankie would be gone for a day or night, I'd come down here looking. What was this Frankie Spain to you? A guy who ran down the court... Hopped the net, shook my hand, and said, swell game, just swell. I haven't won even a set from him since late fall of 1950. Also, we got a place together. The name doesn't mean anything to you, does it? Paul Gray, Frankie Spain? No. Bums. Tennis bums. Good enough to get the third round at Forest Hills. Then anybody who's seated would knock us over. Sometimes maybe we'd do an upset, not often. Real good second rate. Bums. And Frankie had to wind up at the morgue. Sure. How come? Fireball. Played a real good game off the court. Had some glorious wins in the face of odds. For example, once he had a sprained ankle and a blonde six feet tall. 
But now I'm tattling and being jealous and not at all kind to the dead and departed. You kill them? I never killed a thing in my life. Other people. Not me. Other people. What are you trying to say? Here I go yammering again. Sybil Madison. Now I can't stop myself. You should invite her down to see Frankie as a body. I go on and on. Help! Sybil lives in an apartment on 39th, 1212. I hate myself. Yes? Miss Madison? Yes? I'm from the police, Danny Clover. Danny Clover. And then the thought occurs to me that if you are what you say you are, you have the wrong Miss Madison. Sybil Madison, friend of Frankie Spain. Oh, and now you've given me something else to think about. Frankie Spain. <laughs> and suddenly I'm quite helpless. May I come in? Helpless and without defense. You said the password twice. You said Frankie Spain. Miss Madison. Please, please come in. I'm a girl who likes to sit on the floor in front of fireplaces, fold my hands around my knees and put my chin on them and look into the fire and think to myself, I know what fire is. Not many do, but I do. Because... Do you mind? No. <sighs> there. And the thought, why you and not Frankie... Did he send you to tell He's me? He's dead. That... How did he die? We found him in the park. He'd been beaten with a rock, killed, then robbed. I want to tell you about Frankie Spain. I really do. I want to tell you how it was with Frankie Spain. All you have to do is listen. All right. A girl had to be clever, terribly clever to hold him, because a boy like Frankie could get away from you. Be lost to you so easily. So... Because there were other women? Because there were other women. The other women Frankie knew, do you... Uh... When Frankie had not come to me, I would call a place. The place of Mr. and Mrs. Vincent Carey. And Vincent would say, no, he's not here. And I would say, tell him Sybil called. And Vincent would say, I'll do that, Sybil, if he drops by. <laughs> Sybil, Vincent, we've never even seen each other. You have Mr. Carey's address? Yes. Yes, I'll give it to you. And then you will go away. Isn't that terribly sensible, Mr. Clover? Yes. You don't seem to understand, Vincent. I've said it three times now. I've got to go shopping. But Mr. Clover came all the way up here to find out what we knew about Frankie Spain. Do you want me to look like a human being for the dinner party? Do you want me to buy a dress, or do you want me to do what I threatened? I don't care. You can do what you want, Jean. And any suggestion I can make to help out. Bye, dear. Why didn't you stop her, Mr. Clover? You seem to be the one who knows about Frankie, not her. Well... I'm broken up about what's happened, I can tell you. Why? Have you ever had a friend suddenly is gone? Have you known Frankie long? Three years. Are you a tennis player? I watch tennis players, Mr. Clover. A joy, I get. How about Frankie? Three years ago, I saw him win a clay court match in Queens. I waited for him after the game, got myself introduced, and bought him a drink. Why? Because a kid can hit a ball like Frankie. I'm a man Frankie had to know. I asked you a question. Why? How do you think these tennis boys live? Just tell me about Frankie, huh? Three years ago, I saw him, put him on allowance. A comer, that was Frankie. A sponsor, me. He had a great season. Two local championships, invited to Forest Hills. Almost made it to the quarterfinals. Go on. Two years ago, started off real fine. Started early down south. I paid his way, went along, me and my wife. Finals in Miami, one at Savannah, then nothing. Nothing at all. Which brings us up to last year. And? Poor. A big disappointment. This year, worse. A good player, a big game when he played someone worse than himself. Otherwise, just fair. Disappoint. You still sponsor him? Well, you understand. No, just tell me. Laughs. What do you mean? He attracted people. Women. I don't. Sidelines, that's where I... Women? A talent for it. Big, you know, look good. Big. Who killed him? 
Somebody bigger than him, I guess. Bigger for as long as it took to kill him. You? I haven't felt that big for years. Why don't you go now? It's a good time for it. Bye. And outside, city is seen through prisms of October dusk, twilight refracted off sheets of glass, off chrome, off facades of marble and stone. And through fall of October evening, quick passage of the going home people, the finished with work people, city in motion, and somehow city at standstill, motionless, caught in the in-between time, held in the time of autumn dusk, and ride through it and take the way through the park and the place where the night before a man lay in violent death and stopped for a while and only chill there now, the boy with a twig searching through the new fall of leaves who sees you watching him walk slowly away. Stay a while longer, then start the car, head downtown. And at headquarters commissary, order the pot roast and the special, lemon pie a curcio. And the commissary talk drifts into nightfall. Upstairs, then, be told at the front desk, a lady has been waiting for you. Hello there. You remember me? Hello, Mrs. Carey. Uh, what do you... Uh... I finished shopping, and I came to see you, and they said for me to wait in here. I've been waiting quite a while now. Not that I mind. It's still quite a long while. Why, Mrs. Carey? To tell you something. Something I didn't want Vincent to hear, not right away. All in good time. It's what I always say to him. To Vincent, that is. Tell me what, Mrs. Carey? Of Frankie Spain. What about him? Why, that I killed him, that's all. Do you think for a moment I waited for you for another reason? I killed Frankie. Surely that's reason enough, Mr. Clover. Of course it is. You are listening to Broadway's My Beat, written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, and starring Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. Who said America has lost her last frontier? It's not so. And it won't be so while CBS Radio stars Bill Conrad in Gunsmoke every Saturday night on most of these same stations. Gunsmoke, a truly grown-up Western drama, gives exciting accounts of America's frontier struggles, taking us back to early Dodge City, when even a minor dispute could lead to Gunsmoke. Later tonight, at the star's address, enjoy Gunsmoke on CBS Radio. It's listening dynamite. When October comes again, and the night has spilled down over Broadway, the street is spangled with autumn strollers. They come here, the seekers after something or other, to pick a doorway with a promising sign, or pick a smile and run after it, or buy a turtle and have your name painted on it, or a necktie, or a leather pillow and send it back to Mom with her name embroidered in sequins. And if you're lucky, you'll get lipstick on your handkerchief. But the odds say you'll buy a newspaper and go to bed. And at headquarters, in the corridors of dull shock, and a room, office, and a woman... No, thank you. I don't smoke. However, I killed a man. I suppose a kind of equilibrium could Mrs. Be... Carey. Yes? Tell me about it. If that look you've got connotes that I'm a murderess, you're wrong, you know. I pushed him away. He fell. He struck himself. Oh? Not out of frustration. Don't get that idea, please. He didn't beat himself to death because I said to him no. Because I said to him don't. Because I laughed at him. Even let's when he... start all over again. Just so you'll know where it's all leading, you've got to hear the word accident. Did you hear it? Accident. You heard it, didn't you? He slipped and he fell, and from what I understand, he liked to knock his brains out. However, I didn't know he was dead at the time. I merely thought he looked ridiculous. Now we come to the beginning. All right? All right. My husband is a fool. Accept the fact, Mr. Clover, it's important to how this turns out. Go on. Vincent, my husband, had admiration for Frankie Spain. An athlete, Vincent was going to see Frankie on the Davis Cup team. Why aren't you laughing? Just to... Because it's pitiful. See how understanding you suddenly are. Just see. Now we go on. 
Frankie Spain once snapped his fingers at me and I didn't come running. A brute makes noises and gets no response. Beginning of tragedy, which ended on a rock in Central Park. With me? Yeah. Frankie tried and tried. Tried and tried. But last night you decided it kept him waiting long enough. I won't scratch your eyes out because it's partly true. I met him so I could grin at him and laugh at him when he became ridiculous. Listen, I told you what happened. He got gay, he started to slap me around. Look, a bruise. You see, from slapping around. I pushed him, he fell. Dead savage. Dead fellow tennis player, him. Self-defense. Exactly. Word will just have to get out to fellas that when I say no... <laughs> I mean it. You book me now, don't you? Shall we go? Danny? Yes, Dino? Good morning. Good morning, Dino. You slept well, I trust? Uh, you didn't, Gino? Ah, uh, Mrs. T. Her and her recurrent dreams. Oh? Each October on the dot, Mrs. T tosses and turns as prehistoric monsters trod through her slumber. And each October on the dot, she wakes me, describes the monster to me, says, Gino, what is it? Last night's sleep was disturbed by a pterodactyl. Disturbed? That's the fellow with wings, Danny. I looked it up in our reference, and I just phoned it into Mrs. T. She shouldn't Gino. worry. Uh, yes, Danny. You have anything for me? This phone call that was waiting for me while I was talking to Mrs. T, which I took after putting Mrs. T's mind to rest. What phone call, Gino? From Mr. Montez of Montez Jewelers on Park Avenue. That one. That one. Uh huh. The one in which Mr. Montez informed me he believes he has received jewelry stolen from the deceased Frankie Spain. Mr. Montez was not positively certain. He would not say how he knew. However, Mr. Montez suggested. I'll go talk to him. Exactly, Mr. Montez's suggestion, Danny. <laughs> Bye, Danny. Uptown, then, and east to park, and slow ride of the avenue, and display of autumn fashions, dachshund in tailored fur jacket tethered to young woman in matching outfit, and salute of uniformed doormen as they pass in review. Salute also from elderly gentlemen wearing black Homburg and followed at three paces by elderly woman with small animal of piercing eyes cradled in mink sleeve, Receding images of the season as seen through rearview mirror of squad car. Slow ride of Autumn Avenue. And at 60th Street, sleek, glistening expanse of plate glass. And on it, in lowercase gilt, left-hand corner, the word Montez. And inside, Mr. Montez has arranged a thing for your consideration. These, these trinkets. Gold watch, gold ring, gold medal, a slender gold chain to be worn about the neck as affected by athletes and lesser men. And this is slave bracelet, it is called, of gold. You said on the phone you thought they were Frankie Spain's. On the back of these, there are legends. Engraved, very fine, commemorating hazards of the uh, sport tennis. This one, Los Angeles Tennis Club, and the word love. This one, Peoria Country Club, because you made a set point, Frankie. Other legends of like ilk. I read of a tennis athlete, Frankie Spain, dead, that he was robbed. Therefore... I dare the presumption that... I'll take them. Please. And now you will care to know how this came to Montes. Uh-huh. There is a client. She finds things. For example, there was a party the Lelands gave a month ago. She finds things. Brings them to Montes to refashion to her tastes. Yesterday, she brought these trinkets to refashion. She found them, she said. Who is she? On this card, her name. Below it, her address. May I use your phone? When I have gone. Sergeant Gino Tartaglia speaking. Danny Gino, have Mugovan pick up uh, Mrs. Nora Morley... 1832 West 73rd. Bring her in for questioning. You got that? Nora Morley, West 73rd. Yeah, questioning. What about, Danny? Just tell Muggerman to bring her in. I'll be down in a little while. I have a call to make. Thanks, Gino.
Mr. Clover. Hello, Miss Madison. May I... Uh... Mr. Clover. And Mr. Clover to be told that I'm on I my way I want you to look at some things, Miss Madison. To a funeral. For today, they're burying Frankie Spain. And I want to be there. And I do not want to be late. And I do not... That's Frankie's. You're sure? Frankie once took that bracelet off his wrist and held it against my throat and whispered, Slave, 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 over and over. He left a mark for the whole night. Mm. And this? That he wore about his neck, Frankie Spain did. Once I took it off and I held it to his ear, like this. And he was a pirate, bold. <laughs> Frankie Spain. This? On that watch. On the watch of Frankie Spain. My time with him fled. Thanks, Miss Madison. You can... Oh, wait. Yeah? Naughty. <laughs> Naughty, you're holding something back. What? His cigarette case. His golden cigarette case that another woman gave him. That he flaunted under my nose. That he teased me with. He said, why don't you buy me things? Give it to me. Please give it to me. There was no cigarette case. This was all the... I'm naughty. Naughty, you keep it if you want. You keep it. Yes. May I go now to the funeral of Frankie Spain? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I thought she was a living doll, Danny. A cute little old lady who looked like a doll. Until I caught her tapping me for where my wallet was. Uh, thing about this world, Danny, takes all yes, kinds... Yes, it does, Gino. I'll remember that. See you. You watch your hip pocket, that's all. Okay, officer, you can go. How are you, Mrs. Morley? I'm very well, thank you. Sergeant Otaglia told me you uh, tried to pick his pocket. I thought I'd try. I wasn't very good. Now you're chuckling and saying such an old lady with such a... Uh, do you, a... Uh, well... Uh... That's kind that you stumble when you ask, but no, I don't do that sort of thing often. What do you do, Mrs. Marley? I'm sure you'll find out. Find out why? I've been in this building before, you know. Uh, the annex. Exactly where? Uh... A shoplifting. I can't help it. I pay for everything later. Oh, I've been warned and warned. How did you happen to have Frankie Spain's jewelry, Mrs. Morley? Oh, easy. Oh, my. Well, tell me about it. Uh, you mean that young man in the park, don't you? That's right. He was blind drunk. That's why he I say... He was saved... dead. Oh, such a shame. Such a young man, too. Now, here I am, 63 years old, and just as alive as you please, and... And that young man with all that jewelry, uh, I bet he wasn't a day Just over. tell me how come you had his jewelry, Mrs. Morley. Well, let's put two and two together, shall we? Young man, uh, there's this boy lying there, and here I come walking with my dog. Get the picture? You, uh... I rolled him. What happened to the cigarette case? You just said... The cigarette that... case, uh... But why did you say cigarette case? Frankie Spain had one. It's not worth the stuff you brought to Mr. Montez. Oh, you're crazy. You're sure there wasn't any... I'm an old woman. I've seen things that would gray your curly hair. No things, too. Uh, no when to be sure. You ask me, was there a cigarette case? I say, uh, uh, no cigarette case. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> Confess? That's right. I, I can't believe it. You'll see. You, you could have told me. You We've been have... trying to locate you since it happened. Yeah, yeah. This way. Hand this... off my arm, please, Sergeant. Okay, Gino. Well, Vincent. Where were you, dear, when the plug was pulled on everything? He just found out you'd dear, confessed. Dear, dear husband. What do you want? I did it for you. That's the way it turned out. Your friend tried to kiss me in the park on quite a lovely night in quite a lovely setting, and I remembered the code, and I just had to push him away. And that way, I preserved your respect. I want to thank you very much. Then do. Dear Jean. And the way the confession reads, it was all a matter of self-defense. That's police talk for what I explained to you, dear. I know, I know. Proud of me, dear? 
proud? Miss Carey. Wait, I want to look at my husband's being proud of me. Yes, Mr. Clover, what is it? Did you ever buy Frankie Spain a cigarette case? A cigarette case? Yes. No. no. That's right, she never did, Mr. Clover, only once. And you know what once is are hardly worth mentioning. Where is it? It was so long ago. I've got to tell you something, dear. What? When I leave here, I'm going to get drunk. All right. A good drunk, Gene, a righteous drunk. Why? You. I've been all over the city all day long thinking about it. You, Frankie. Mr. Clover. What? If you're looking for a cigarette case... Don't, Vincent. If you're looking for a cigarette case for whatever reason, and if it's the one my wife gave to that boy... It's home. It's in my house. Yesterday morning it appeared, and I guessed my wife got it back from Frank. You said you didn't like Frankie Spain. Not much. I didn't. Why did you kill him? Police call it self-defense. It was. He was throwing her over. She had to defend herself against it. Vincent? Yes. Vincent? What? I could do the same thing to you. I know. I could. Beat him to death. I could. Like you did to Frankie. Just like it. Only, well, Vincent... Poor dear. You wouldn't be worth it. But Frankie was. Well, he just wasn't going to throw me over, that's all. I'd promised myself that long ago. Nobody is going to throw me over. <laughs> Broadway's wearing its harlequin clothes. It winks an eye and beckons. And in the press of crowd, there, a pale girl walks like a queen because it's a dream street. And there, the man with begging eyes, hungry with his new dream. It's a laugh or a cry with nothing in between. It's Broadway, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway, my beat. Broadway's My Beat stars Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover, with Charles Calvert as Totaglia and Jack Crucian as Mugovan. The program is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis with musical score composed and conducted by Alexander Courage. In tonight's story, Joan Banks was heard as Jean and Lou Merrill as Vincent. Featured in the cast were Sammy Hill, Florence Walcott, and Sam Edwards. Bill Anders speaking. A reminder, your date with Detective Danny Clover will come on Wednesday night starting next week. Mystery fans who enjoy following Danny's cases and throwing in clues from armchair sleuthing range, you'll want to make a note of Danny's change of night and time, and each Wednesday thereafter, stop and listen for Broadway's My Beat, thrilling as ever at its new night and time. The top dramatic show of all, the Lux Radio Theater is heard Monday nights on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>